Hey everyone, this is Mike with Free Arming Hiker, and today I'm talking to you about the stunning Paintbrush Cascade Canyon Loop. Uh, if you're going to do one backpacking trip in Grand Teton National Park and you only have two days to do it, this is the one to do. By far one of the most scenic trails in the park, and actually there's, it's also part of the Teton Crest Trail. Uh, along the way there's just stunning glacial lakes, there's an immense climb up to Paintbrush Divide, there's serene forests all along the way. It's really just got it all. It's just shy of 20 miles, so it makes for a perfect two-day loop, um, showing off some of the best that the Tetons have to offer. Uh, you will need a permit from the park, uh, so stop in at the visitor center to acquire one. And uh, I will tell you which spots are probably the best to camp at and which spots aren't uh, in terms of completing this loop in a nice, timely manner. So you can also go clockwise or counterclockwise since it is a loop. Um, it really doesn't matter. Uh, personally, I prefer going counterclockwise, so up Paintbrush and then down the north, then down North Fork and Cascade Canyon. Uh, for two reasons. For one, it's a little easier on your knees coming down the North Fork than it is Paintbrush. Also, just the views coming down the North Fork as you see Lake Solitude and the Cathedral Group of Tetons is just no beating it. It's, it's pretty spectacular. So for that reason, I prefer going counterclockwise, um, but you can do it clockwise. It's still just as good. You'll have fun either way. And really that'll depend on if the permits are available or not, depending on which sites fill up when you get there, you may want to just, you know, be forced to do one or the other. In either case, you're going to want to begin from either the String Lake or the Lee Lake trailheads. They are both pretty much right next to each other. So you know, they're only about a quarter mile, half mile apart uh, along String Lake. So it doesn't matter really which one you start at. Um, if you start at the String Lake Trailhead, you'll have a little bit less hiking on your way out. Um, if you start at Lee Lake, you'll just have like a quarter or a half mile more to do on your way out, which isn't that big of a deal considering what you just came from. So this is going to be discussing it from counterclockwise. So just make any adjustments as you, as you need. So the trail from the trailhead will head north along String Lake, which, you know, is a great way to start a trail. Uh, it's a beautifully calm lake, especially early in the morning before people get there. Uh, you have fantastic views of the Tetons to the south reflected in the water. There's a forest surrounding it. It's really, really beautiful. Um, it'll cross the runoff from Lee Lake. You'll see a junction you'll want to head left up to Paintbrush Canyon. And at that point, it's going to head deeper into the forest and away from the lake. Uh, it does this as it begins to climb up into Paintbrush Canyon. You'll be climbing into the mouth of the Paintbrush Canyon, which is all pretty forested. And uh, after a little bit of climbing, it's going to level off for a while. You're going to have a nice bit of easy hiking through the forest. Uh, and then you'll, per you'll soon enter the lower Paintbrush Camping Zone. For me, if you only have two days, this is still a little early to camp. I would avoid the lower paintbrush camping zone because that's basically going to leave you, you know, a good 15 or 16 miles left of the loop the next day. So you probably want to avoid that unless you're just super short on time for whatever reason. As you start to near the opposite end of the camping zone, the trail is going to start to gain some elevation again. And you'll emerge from the forest with just some beautiful views of the canyon uh, looking up into paintbrush. Um, you'll start to see some waterfalls pouring down the, the massive peaks, and you'll even see some pouring down the trail if you're at this in the season early enough. There's definitely a lot of water coming down there, a lot of snow melt, and it makes for some beautiful scenery. So the trail will continue to climb, gaining elevation. Sometimes there's a forest, but it's you know it's always scenic. You can't go wrong in Paintbrush Canyon. It's it's one of the most underrated canyons I think. Having left the lower Paintbrush camping zone a, lot, a while back. Uh, you'll pass the outlier campsite. And again, for me, this is still a little bit early. This is only a no, another mile or two past the lower paintbrush camping zone. So the outlier campsite, I still think is a little bit early. It leaves a lot left to hike the next day. So you'll probably want to avoid this one too. If you have three days, it's a decent option. Um, but, you know, if you're trying to do this in two, it's probably worth skipping. Past outlier, the trail will begin to start to get a little steeper. You're going to start nearing the tree line and at that point, you know, you're, you're starting to gain more elevation. The trail's been pretty easy going um, relatively up until then, but at some point it is going to have to start climbing and it's, it's going to start doing so uh, once you start getting past outlier. 
and just up ahead, you're going to notice that the trail forks. It just connects up about a mile later. Uh, both ways are officially the Paintbrush Canyon Trail, so there's no right or wrong way. The only difference is that right, uh, heading right, goes to Holly Lake, uh, and you definitely want to see Holly Lake. Left just goes through some alpine scenery, which is really beautiful. Uh, has its own small lakes and ponds, but Holly Lake is definitely worth stopping at, especially if you haven't done the trail before. Um, so I would highly recommend going that way. Uh, shortly after, you'll also get to the upper paintbrush camping zone. There's also campsites at Holly Lake. Uh, they're two separate permits, so make sure you talk with the park about which one you want. And if you're going counterclockwise, I would highly recommend uh, getting a campsite at either Holly Lake or the upper paintbrush camping zone. This is the last good place to camp before you climb the divide. Uh, it gives you a nice place to rest and sleep, sleep off what you've done and then be rested and ready to go before climbing up to the paintbrush divide. And then once you're past the divide, the rest of the trail is pretty much all downhill. Uh, once you get past Cascade Canyon, there's a little bit of up and down, but nothing really considerably measurable. So definitely the upper paintbrush camping area is the place to camp if you want to do this hike in two days. Holly Lake is also a good place to fill up on water. There'll be some snow melting, but it's probably one of the last really reliable places that you're going to see before climbing up to the divide. So I'd make sure you got some water for, uh, ready to go and that you're hydrated well because it's high up, there's snow, but it's still very dry. And after Holly Lake, the trail will get noticeably steeper as you start climbing up toward, toward the divide. Uh, it quickly passes the tree line and you'll begin climbing through a lot of talus and a lot of loose rocks and really just a really exposed uh, but beautiful uh, top of the canyon. Uh, if you're hiking pretty early in the season, uh, typically, you know, mid-July or earlier, uh, maybe even late July, depending on the season, you're likely going to run into snow. Uh, it can be a little treacherous. Um, it's It can be a little scary, so... Uh, if you are hiking up, I would say mid-July or earlier, you probably want to have some crampons um, just to be safe because it's it's unforgivingly steep up there. And if one small slip on the snow and it's going to ruin the whole day and then a lot more. Regardless, along the way, there's fantastic views looking down the canyon. There's fantastic views looking down Lee Canyon, which you get some nice glimpses into. The Grizzly Bear Lakes uh, you'll see right below as, you, as you're climbing up. Uh, in Upper Lee Canyon, which is really pretty. And then after that big last push, you climb up to the Paintbrush Divide and you're at 10,720 feet, give or take, uh, above sea level. And it's a great place to rest, great place to have a snack. Um, you know, you can just chill there while looking down Paintbrush Canyon. Beautiful place to relax. And whenever you're ready to go, you start descending into the North Fork right after that. Uh, you'll see the cathedral group pretty quickly come into view and they just tower over the landscape in the distance. It's pretty spectacular. If you're not familiar with it, the cathedral group are comprised of the Grand Teton, Mount Owen, and Tiwanot, which you see stunning views of all the way through the North Fork of Cascade Canyon. All the way from the top to the bottom, you're going to see these peaks and they're just going to have a, an immense presence to them. You'll make a couple of switchbacks above treeline as you start to kind of get back into treeline. And then after that, it's just going to make a, a really consistent, long drop down toward Lake Solitude, which is going to become exposed uh, on the way down. And it's just a really fantastic view, seeing it tucked away um, at the back of the canyon there. You'll see Mica Lake uh, sitting right above it. It's a nice, bold turquoise lake. Um, there's no trail to that, but it does make for some pretty fantastic scenery on your way down. Along the way down, you're going to see uh, the canyon just bursting with wildflowers, all sorts of colors, uh, especially as you get closer to the lake. It's just a fantastic, just alpine wildflower uh, scene. The lake makes a great place to just stop and rest, um, get some more water if you need it. And then after that, you got, you know, an easy downhill hike. As you start descending the North Fork, I mean, the views just are nonstop. Looking up into the Cathedral Group, you'll be coming in and out of the forest. Every turn is going to yield a different view. And eventually, you're going to go into a larger forest. Um, and shortly after that, you're going to run into the Fork with Cascade Canyon and the South Fork of Cascade Canyon, at which point you want to go left. And that will bring you down into Cascade Canyon to 
start closing out the loop. It's not like the scenery dies down. This is one of the most stunning mountain canyons you'll ever see. You got the Grand Teton and Mount Owen uh, just towering above thousands of feet on the right. Waterfalls are pouring down from snow melts all, all summer long. It's just a really beautiful canyon uh, from start to finish. And so near the mouth of the canyon, uh, you're going to reach another junction. If you've already done Inspiration Point and you're just looking to get back, you want to dodge the crowds, head left. That'll be a little shortcut back um, to the Jenny Lake Loop where you can just kind of skip Inspiration Point. If you never have done Inspiration Point, probably worth doing. It's, it's one of the must-do trails of the Tetons. It's a good way to just kind of include it, see what all the fuss is about. Uh, either way, as you get to the Jenny Lake Loop, you're going to want to go left, and that'll take you back north up Jenny Lake, where you'll hike through the forest. Uh, that'll open up once you get to an old forest fire burn, where you get some great views looking back at the Cathedral Group and Jenny Lake itself. And then you'll run into String Lake. You'll hit another junction as you get to the String Lake Loop. Um, continue right, and you'll cross String Lake eventually, and that'll bring you back to the trailheads and that'll close out the loop for you. In terms of wildlife, most of the wildlife I've seen along this trail are black bears, moose, pika, marmots, uh, things like that. That's what's most commonly seen along the route. That doesn't mean you won't see something else. That doesn't mean you're gonna see all of them. That's just the way wildlife is. You might see all those things and then some, you might not see any of it. It just depends on timing and luck. If you wanna read more in depth about this route, uh, and you want to look at the maps and the elevation profile, I have that on my website at Free Roaming Hiker, and I will post a direct link in the description, so you can just look for that, click on it, and go straight there. Uh, and if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and happy trails!